What's up, YouTubers? Welcome to my channel, Andrea Renee Abroad, where I talk about Peace Corps, travel, and working abroad. I'm a returned Peace Corps volunteer who served in Nicaragua from August of 2016 to April of 2018. I am now living and working in Melbourne, Australia as an au pair for a family with three young children. In today's video, I wanted to talk to you all about another Melbourne day trip that you can take if you are planning to visit Melbourne but want to have a break from the big city. Yesterday, I explored the city of Ballarat, which is located just an hour and 40 minutes outside of the city of Melbourne, and it is quite affordable, so I wanted to tell you all about it. But before we jump into the video, I wanted to tell you all about some updates that I recently made to my Instagram account. In addition to the daily photos that I've been posting and the stories, I now have added a highlight feature, which includes highlights on Australia, as well as highlights on being an au pair. If you are interested in receiving receiving more content from me about Peace Corps travel and working abroad, be sure to check out my Instagram. Let's go ahead and jump into the video. Ballarat happens to be a great place to take a weekend trip, but if you're here on a weekday, you can also take the train out to Ballarat on a weekday. So just to give you all a little bit of context as to why you should visit Ballarat, let me provide you with a little bit of history on Melbourne. So many of you might already be aware of the fact that Tasmania used to be a penal colony for the British Empire. They they would send their criminals to Tasmania for prison basically. But eventually some of those white settlers started to go across the channel and go to what is today Melbourne. And then in the 1850s, specifically in 1851, gold was discovered outside of Melbourne. That's when you started to get an influx of Chinese immigrants to Melbourne because they were also interested in the gold. So you had the white settlers as well as the Chinese settlers moving into the gold fields in what is today Ballarat. I happen to live just a little bit out of the city center, so I first had to take a tram from where I live to Southern Cross Station. Southern Cross is one of the few train stations located within the CBD, the Central Business District of Melbourne, that will take you to various cities outside of Melbourne. So if you would like to go to Ballarat, make sure you go to Southern Cross Station. Now my recommendation, even though there is technically a transit app available here in the state of Victoria, I actually recommend using just good old Google Maps. If you just search Ballarat on Google Maps, it will give you a timeline of when you need to be at Southern Cross Station and when you will arrive in Ballarat. So like I said before, the train ride from Southern Cross Station to Ballarat took about an hour and 45 minutes. Now it was the weekend, even though there wasn't too many people on the train, I feel like the train was a little bit delayed. So if you're traveling on a weekday, I think you could probably count on getting to Ballarat with in an hour and 20 minutes, but just out, check out your Google Maps and it will tell you what to do. Just a quick pro tip about riding the trains. So if you pick the carriage that is at the very end, so it will be either the front end or the back end, depending on what direction you are going. If you pick that carriage, it will be considered a quiet carriage. So if you're the kind of person who likes silence while you're on a train ride and you don't want too many people talking around you, I definitely recommend getting on one of the quiet carriages which is what I did. When I got off the train, they were announcing bus services to Sovereign Hill. Now, Sovereign Hill is an amazing town that has been recreated to imitate what Ballarat looked like during the gold age period, during the gold rush of the 1850s. It is basically an entire gold rush city. And it is really cool because you can actually interact with the city. You can walk around this old gold rush city. The different workers there are dressed in clothing of the 1850s, so it's very much a step back in time. Now, when I caught the shuttle bus, to Sovereign Hill, the gentleman was very friendly and provided me with a 10% discount coupon to enter Sovereign Hill because actually Sovereign Hill is a little bit expensive. It is 57 Aussie dollars, which I'll translate to USD down here for you all. So when the shuttle driver gave me the coupon, that was a big relief because at least I would get 10% off in addition to a buggy ride, which I probably would not have gone on otherwise. With that coupon, on, I entered Sovereign Hill. I paid $51 to enter, which I know is still really expensive, but believe me, it is 
worth it, especially if you have children with you because this is a family friendly zone. So I ended up spending about two and a half hours at Sovereign Hill. I walked around the city, I went on a horse ride, I went down in one of the mines. It was a little bit spooky. There are a few other activities that you can do at Sovereign Hill, which I didn't do, but for example, you can pan for gold. And then there's also another mine tour, which you have to pay an additional $7 for, but apparently it's pretty cool. I felt fine with just the mine that I went down in. I am a little bit claustrophobic, so I wasn't too keen on the idea of going down into another mine. But if you are into that sort of thing, or if you're going with your kids, I would absolutely recommend doing that paid mine tour. There are a few restaurants within Sovereign Hill because it is a completely recreated historic city. So they have cafes, restaurants, even a bar and a candy shop. They have a candle making shop. They have an apothecary, basically anything you can think of that comes to your mind in a historic town is in Sovereign Hill. Now with your ticket to Sovereign Hill, you can actually hop across the street to the gold museum. If you're a bit of a history buff, this would definitely be a place for you. Now, I personally didn't get a whole lot out of the museum because I already have done the Chinese Museum as well as the Treasury Building Museum here in Melbourne. And so a lot of the same information that I found at those museums was available at the Gold Museum. I would say if you have limited time here in Melbourne, don't do all three of those museums because they essentially have the same information. Again, that's the Gold Museum in Ballarat, the Chinese Museum in Chinatown, Melbourne, and the treasury building here in Melbourne as well. So just pick one of those because they essentially all have the same information. But if you've already gone to Sovereign Hill, like I said, it's a free entry to the Gold Museum, which would otherwise be about $12 to enter. A day trip to Ballarat would not be complete without a visit to the Art Gallery of Ballarat. If you're a fan of fine art like me, then you will absolutely love this gallery, which has an excellent blend of Renaissance work Work, Aboriginal art, as well as a few other modern pieces. Now, I personally felt like I did not have enough time in the art gallery, so I actually plan to go back another day because they do happen to have a special exhibit. If you are really into the fine arts, then I would definitely recommend getting on the Gallery of Ballarat's website just to check if they have any specific art shows going on. If you like fine art over history, then it is definitely still worth a trip to Ballarat to check out the art, different art exhibits that they have going on in the city. So definitely be sure to check out their website, which I will put down in the description below. No day trip would be complete without a proper meal. And if you're someone who has dietary restrictions like me, then fork, knife, spoon, I think that's the order, but anyways, I'll write it down below, is the best option for you. They have gluten-free options, nut-free options, as well as vegan options. So I was able to find myself some food to recharge while I was there. If you do have enough time to take two days in Ballarat, that would be my suggestion as there is quite a few other things to do. I wasn't able to check out the museum at Eureka, but that is another popular option there. But either way, I definitely recommend Ballarat as a great place for you to visit while you are in Melbourne to get a break from the city. If you haven't seen my other video on day trips from Melbourne, be sure to check it out. I'll put it up here. It's on the Great Ocean Road, which is another day trip out of Melbourne that I highly recommend for you all. If you are interested in finding out more information about Peace Corps travel and working abroad. I post weekly blogs as well as daily photos on Instagram, and you can find out about everything I'm doing on my Facebook account. If you got value from this video, don't forget to like and even subscribe if you would like to receive more content like this. Thank you all, and I'll see you all next week.